Johns is a term we use for excuses. A lot of people don't know where the term came from, it just started, but I believe it was a guy in Texas, Texas. his name yeah, was John, and no matter what, every time he'd lose, he'd have an excuse. He'd have a reason for losing. <laughs> it's like, I didn't sleep last night, or I don't know why I'm not coming today. My I need a warm hurt. up. Like, yeah, man. <laughs> like, I haven't eaten all day. Like, you know, John's excuse. My, my favorite so. one, I think, was uh, I was playing somebody and they were like, someone's touching my shoulder. And I was like, no, John's. <laughs> yeah. No, John's. That, that's, that's not relevant yeah. right now. It's, just, it's stuff that either, you know, doesn't really affect you or happens to everyone. So we just don't want to hear about it. Yeah. Yeah. Even sometimes I'm not playing it's well totally... today. Everyone doesn't play well certain yeah, days. Yeah, like you know, even if it's totally legit. Like if someone's like, oh, I couldn't make it to the, to the tournament. I broke my leg on in the airport. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, no, John's. 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 You should have made That's it. when no, it John's. turns into a joke. You know, <laughs> yeah. someone's playing and you unplug his controller. He's like, you unplug my controller. No, John's. So, a lot of people don't really understand Smash as a competitive game. I'm, I'm, I've heard that uh, the first year at EVO 2K, a lot of the, like, the Street Fighter pros and stuff were kind of making fun of it. If you do not play the game, it's hard to understand. Like yeah. You guys said you had a guy in the office who, who says there's like two moves that you use total in the game, which is completely not true. It's a very deep game, but so we pretty much ignore it. But so like with I Evo, I mean, Evo was really impressed with our community. Uh, Mr. Wizard, their their leader, came to our in one of our sites and made a big post about how impressed he was with you know how deep the game was and how mature the players handled themselves. And, yeah, yeah, I think so. we had like the second highest attendance after was it Marvel versus Capcom? I think so. Oh, but we we brought in about 270 people for the finals. Well, wow. um, the largest melee tournament ever. The community is just way more tight knit than most other games. So Street Fighter has showyken.com, Virtual Fighter has BFD, BFDC. Where do you, where do you guys go? Do you go? Smashboards. 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 And, then, um, and the well, new site. Called. And the new site that this came out. It's, <laughs> What's the new site? Neil is in charge of Neil and JV, right? Mm -hmm. It's uh, alwaysbrawl.com. Well, it seems like Nintendo doesn't even look at it as like a serious competitive. I yeah, they really took away a, a lot from it. I really, really like pretty much everything about Brawl, unless it's stuff that they took out. It's the fact that you can air dodge multiple times, uh, that you can do moves out of your air dodges. I, I think that it opens up a lot of defensive options, which seems to be the way that they went. With everything that they added in the game, everything is more defensive options. Throw is ridiculous in this game. Like, okay, in Smash 64 you had throws that could kill you. In Smash Melee you had throws that could combo you. In this game you have throws that'll give you 3%. There's no point. There's almost <laughs> very few characters have a use for their throws. It doesn't combo and it doesn't kill. I think Sakurai, <laughs> like he, he went from a game like Melee where it yeah. was like rock, paper, scissors. You have your attacks, your shields, and your grabs. Shield beats attack, attack beats grab, grab beats shield. Right. And here, with the new system, it's pretty much he just turned it into a game of just rocks and scissors, and like that's it, <laughs> you know. Since it's more defensive game, do you think it's it's uh, cater to turtlers or is this like a hit and run game? Yeah, yeah. I know the game's really early, but what do you think are uh, the top people and the bottom people in brawl? I think we'll all agree on Marth and Meta Knight. Yeah, for sure. So Meta Knight and Marth. Who else? Toon Link. Yeah, Toon Link's really Toon Link good. Is ridiculous. Um, I think the Game & Watch is really good. So what are we doing with Game & Watch? Alright, just his back air is one of the best moves in the game. So just put your shield up. So like, if you short hop a back air, like, it'll poke through the shield almost every time. Because in Brawl, the shield only protects the area that it's actually visibly showing. Okay. Yeah, so you can still, you like, tilt his, it. So his yeah. head's still sticking out, you can oh, hit his head. Okay. It was like that in Melee. Damn. And then um, there was a 
a, a different website, game website, that's claimed Day to Day as the worst character in the game, which is ridiculous. Because he's no, easily not one at all. He's one of the best. Yeah, we didn't mention him, but he's definitely one of the best. So why is D three so good? He's powerful. He's got multiple jumps. He's got great maneuverability. He's got a great right, range recovery. Guard. He's got so the you chain can just grab. do this for like an hour and just like <laughs> stay there, keeping you off. He's powerful. He is slow, but that's not a big deal. What does deal the chain grab look like? Basically, he throws him down, and the character, rather than falling over or going anywhere, just sort of plops right in front of you standing up. So you uh -huh. run forward, grab him again before he can really do anything. Yeah, you can, A lot yeah. of characters can jab you or do something before you can grab them again. Yeah. But there's some, you just do it all the way across the stage. Um, some stages you can do it against the wall and they can't get out of it. Or you just walk him off the ledge doing it. Is up smash it. is fantastic, because it covers such a huge range. And plus... <laughs> My, as my friend pointed out, he's got the Playboy bunny on his back. He's <laughs> 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 Olimar, honestly, I think Olimar is one of, if not the best characters on the stage. You can just wait for them to approach, and wherever they approach from, you just point this little yellow stick at them. <laughs> and, and you'll be able to punch them. They'll throw a smash tag. You go up, forward, down, and then if they go right there, you can do your up beat. Like, but once you get them off, yeah. Again, one of the easiest characters to kill off the edge because he, he's only got his head of recovery. So it, it has Diddy Kong. His dash attack is so good. It has zero lag. Like you cannot punish it. So you dash attack into whatever you want. Like I just did wow. two moves right there. Are you serious? Yeah. And like and and like shield it. Just shield it. You can't punish it. There's no way. When he says that Diddy has very little lag after dash attack, he means that you know once the dash attack finishes. There's very little want. opportunity for someone to do something before you can attack again. And, he, and like, the bananas. I totally forgot about the bananas. The bananas are, are fantastic. Let's say I just I just throw like a banana or something like that, right? And then I get to this side of him, and I throw him, and like, he tries to tech roll or something like that. And I, I Like, I'm not... Yeah, so he's like right there, and then I can, I can punish <laughs> so him. So just really limit your options. Who's the character you think got nerfed? Didn't Captain Falcon, because you can't roll cancel? Falcon, this, this guy Falcon is a too. stereotypical example of, of who got nerfed. Sam's and then the thing, what they did was that I don't agree with, is they nerfed characters that did not need to be nerfed. They, they nerfed uh, Samus, who wasn't that great in me. They, they nerfed uh, Peach. Do you think they nerfed Jigglypuff? I think they did. Ganon. Ganon. Ganon, Ganon, Ganon was not bad. deserve to be nerfed. <laughs> edge hogging is when you grab the edge in order to avoid, in order to stop your opponent from grabbing the ledge himself. So he just ends up dying and you hang on. So pretty much what you do is you run in that direction and because you can grab the stage by just pressing back when you're facing away from it, uh -huh. you can just drop and then, oh, I didn't mean to do it right yeah, now. <laughs> Already you know that it takes skill if you don't mess it up one. Like that. You you can, yeah, you can run just off run facing off. the other direction. It's hard to do with some characters, but like with okay. Meta Knight, for example. Ah, oh, there's Tripping. Meta Knight, good one, second. Surprise of prank. <laughs> Did you read that? Have you seen Tripping? Have you ever seen uh, it? No, I haven't seen Tripping. It's, it's tripping. ridiculous. Oh, no, no, no. See, People are is. calling it the worst thing that they've ever added to any fighting game. It could cost yeah. you the match, pretty much. So I'm just imagining like a $10,000 tournament where the guy trips at the last second and he dies. So as he's running, he, he could it's be possible arbitrarily tripped. Whoever thought of tripping and then sh should have been fired. And then, <laughs> and then they had to have gone through a bunch of other people to approve it. They all should have been fired too. <laughs> person who's shielded has the advantage, like you can punish them really easily. But if you're playing a character like Meta Knight, you can just kind of keep chopping at their shield. So like, I, I just kind of wander around the stage and try to space myself so they'll be able to miss, but I've got a huge sword, like I have a massive range. So like, I'll just do something like that on their shield, you know, and, and eventually like, so what are you doing? You're just doing I'm just doing down tilts and forward back. tilts. Like, like it's really hard to... Like most other people, I can just let go of my shield and punish them, but Meta Knight's just so fast that I can't. Yeah, like you can kind of push him all the way across the stage. So Meta has massive frame advantage after uh, his attacks. Yeah. Hmm. So if you guys were going to give some advice to I mean, some of the people out there who want to get good at this game and like play at a level like you guys, what would you tell them? Find people near you. Uh, you know, go on these community sites, find people in your area. They all have regional zones. Yeah. Uh, you hook up with people, you know, 10 minutes away and just go and play. The Smash community is much more open and friendly to, to new people coming in, it seems like. If Smash was on the main circuit for MLG. If MLG is a, a pro console gaming tournament league, it was Halo and Smash for the two big games to go on. And the thing is, I would watch their communities. I would never see the winning team go out to lunch with the third place team. It just <laughs> wouldn't happen. Yeah. Here, you have the guy who plays first, the guy who plays second, the guy who plays 97th. It's not just with the elite players, it's with everybody. Everybody's so friendly. And it's, you know, it's because 
our community wasn't built online with online gameplay. It was built from some guy hosting a tournament in his bedroom. There's this misconception, like some people some say, people by turning off items and stuff like that, that people who play tournaments do not play this game for fun. And that could not be more incorrect. Like, we have a lot of fun playing like this. I have more fun playing like this than I do playing with all the crazy stuff on. Not to say that that's not fun, I still have fun it's doing that. But fun, so. it's just frustrating when people try to tell you this is fun, what you are doing is not fun. Because we really enjoy the game a lot. The reason why I chose a platformer initially was because I wanted a simple world with simple rules mm -hmm. that would be easy to picture in your mind what could happen, mm. you know, and, and that that would help because this rewinding thing and all the different things that can happen with time. I mean, they're not super complicated once you get used to them, but they're not the way that you're used to thinking. And so I wanted to have a simple backdrop for that to take place. Mm. Um, and once I had that simple backdrop, um, other things uh, came to mind, like, oh yes, I don't have to explain too much about, you know, oh, you jump on monsters' heads to kill them, mm -hmm. because people know that. And, and I actually think also towards that comfort zone area is, uh, is the graphical style of the game. And one of the uh, most important um, aspects of the art direction that we talked about uh, consistently was, was always clarifying what, what the player could touch and what he couldn't because you need to be able to apprehend immediately what you're looking at and not to go through a period of confusion, not to make the puzzles unnecessarily complicated and not to mislead the player in any way. But there's a, there's a, a kind of thematic reason also, which, which, is to do, which has to do with the um, variation between highly detailed artwork and, and like you said, um, impressionistic artwork. Right? The Braid world is a fluid changing world where the rules can change. Mm -hmm. And as you go from, from place to place, there are different laws that are governing the action. And embedded in the game is this idea that the world can be revised and also that the world is a creation of human thought, or that our thoughts, and, and that's part of the story. Mm. And you've got, you know, real world solid in front of you. You've got impression and distance behind you. Mm -hmm. And the, the interplay between those two things, kind of when I was watching you play, I was trying to classify, you know, my emotional response to this, which is something that I don't usually do in game. Braid really got that to me, and I was, I was literally thinking, how do I feel when I'm looking at this game? I mean, I credit the game design a lot for that because mm. I think that um, the game gives you gives you space to have a reaction. Mm. You know, it's not it's not measuring you and, and reprimanding you and and forcing you to to worry about things that would put you in a kind of like resource management worrying kind of mode. Right, because like the the controlling time, the rewinding time is unlimited. Right, essentially. Yeah, and stuff like the the story just being there, and if you stand in front of a podium, you get it. But you can walk past and. It's kind of like, um, that's one of my favorite things about the game, that there's uh, all of its best stuff is kind of latent, and it's just waiting for you to invest something, and then it's there. The game is a good conversation list for me because it kind of listens a lot, or it kind of leaves a lot of open space, and there's a nice, like, welcoming feeling when you, when you invest in it. You could walk right past puzzles that you, did, that you weren't ready to solve, or that you couldn't solve right away, you hadn't figured out just yet, and so there is a, and the, you could go, go back to different parts of the world at different times. And I think that that's one style of play. Like, there's going to be some players who are like, I want to see the end of the game, and I'm going to beat this game, right? Sure. And they're just going to run past everything. And I think that they would get the feeling that they're missing something, right? Mm -hmm. And that's fine. It's trying to be an interesting place for you to feel things and see things and discover things. And it's got some things that it recommends, you know, like, hey, look at this time stuff. but. If you wanted to ignore that, you could. You couldn't win without doing that, but um, you could still do some interesting things in, in the space. Because you can visit all of the worlds in an almost arbitrary order and solve the puzzles in an arbitrary order, um, the story can actually be visited non-linearly also to a certain extent. And so it's not your classic linear game story. It's more like um, here are different pieces of like maybe things in a scrapbook or something. like they're juxtaposed off each other and together they combine to build this whole picture somehow. Hmm. The world is about 
vagueness and revision, because mm. that ties back into time, right? If you can rewind and change things in the past and whatever, what what is history, right? Right? What is the future? There's always something that the player can bring to his to the way he reads it, and mm. uh, hopefully there will be a lot of interesting discussions about the fiction. And one of the things that I'm actually really looking forward to is taking the puzzle pieces and building the pictures in, in the hub world, because you said that those are evocative of whatever that level's particular theme is. The image represents in some way, um, it's both an, an acknowledgement that you've completed that world and that you had this certain set of experiences, but it also is, um, it's viewing that theme of that world from a different angle, right? So there's several things that combine to create the feeling of one world. There's the actual behavior of time that you play, right? There's the art behind the world, what are the colors and what's the style? Mm. Um, and then there's the fiction, right, which is the metaphor for the gameplay. Um, and all of those things work together, right? And um, then that final image that you put together is kind of a different window onto those same ideas. It's never just going to be like, oh, you played through this world where you can rewind, and so the picture is of you rewinding now. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, there's nothing very interesting about that. Yeah. Like, that would be kind of a letdown to put that mm. together. It's something different that you can think about and interpret. I think there is a lot of care in the game design of Braid, and I think there is a lot of care in the art. And it was it was funny because, like, when you were showing us the demo, I asked you, like, so what are these... You, you're the level artist, and I asked, so... Or, or you're the world artist, and so I asked, are these tile sets? How, how did you make these? And, but they're actually just, you know, one large canvas or, you know, with some large pieces that are going together, right? Um, irregular pieces that can be put together and sort of overlapped. So there'll be a rock or a little edge of a cliff or a piece of ground or whatever. And then they have fuzzy edges so you can sort of overlap them and they look like they flow into each other. And so that's how we... And so the effect is organic as opposed right. to, you know, here's, here's this tile repeated X times. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, and does that play into the, into the theme of the game overall as well? Tiles are, by definition, very structured and well-defined, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, they fit yeah. in a box, and yeah. there's a bunch of boxes. Right. That's, right. that's, that's not the world of... It wouldn't great. have been the right look. Yeah. And it also is a more... You can definitely, like, do great art with tiles, but it does look more... It's very rigid, and it's, it's a clear... And I think Braid has a, a, like a handmade, personal look to it. Mm. And like John pointed out, the books, like there are four, five books there, and there are several different books, and you, your eye kind of notices, um, or you don't see a repetition, you sort of have a feel that they're right. organic. Nine out of ten times, that would never, I would never expect to see that in a game where they just copy and paste, uh, you know, that's level design 101. It's right, like, yeah. find and find, you know, you make a column, make a wall, and just repeat the whole way down. And you're not used to seeing that, and that makes you look at it differently. Which brings us back to our strategy, which is to outspend the competition. <laughs> How did you guys collaborate? I was um, doing a comic with a friend of mine at the time. So I like collab like small collaborative projects. Yeah. And um, I did this web comic for a while, but that was kind of winding down. And it felt very, like, comfortable to me to go into that, you know, that sure. the space thematically. The game's been in development over three years. Yeah. Didn't have to be, right? It was actually the version that won the IGF Game Design Award um, was submitted to them in December 2005. Mm -hmm. It was fully playable from end to end. The puzzles have been revised and they're a little better now, but they were basically all there. Mm. It's, so it's been two years and a few months of just refining the game. I kind of wanted to ask you about that because when you talk to a lot of independent developers, one of the huge pros uh, that they would say about um, being independent is shorter development times where a lot of them are like, oh my goodness, the idea of working five years on a single project is just completely overwhelming for me. And even when we talked to Phil Fish about Fez, he had said, you know, I've been working on Fez for a year. And even that is starting to be like, this is a long time of working on a game. And you said three years you've been working on, on Braid. Um, when you go on to your next project or anything, I mean, is that kind of something you're looking forward to is maybe something I, you could just spend six months on or eight months on? Or are you more of the mentality of, I'll spend as much time working on a project as long as I'm excited about it and until it's done? You know, I have game ideas that would be short, but maybe by the time I do them, they'll be three years. I really don't want that. I don't want to spend three years on my next game. Right. I got you. But, but if that's what has to be done to make it good, then I will. Oh my gosh. Hugo. I'm like, does anybody here even play Smash? Don't you? No. I like real fighting games, man. I like real fighting games, man. I like real fighting games. I gotta beat this idiot. You guys help me? The time is
is drawing near Our fight is almost here And I just can't wait another day I want to final smash you Final smash you through a fucking wall Bring me the man that will fight me in Smash Bro Find me that hero who's gonna take it all Never surrender, battle forever And be fighting for the honor of Brawl There was a time when we were brothers That was a long time ago Training me that far away Preparing for our match today So, Dark Sector, what do you guys think of uh, Gears of War 1.5? Is that accurate? Minus co-op with like an amped up single player storyline and like Glaive, I guess. Seeing this game in previews, it didn't inspire me to get excited about it the way that I was excited about a game like Gears of War. But I could feel the excitement building from every person that had gone to play it and come back to talk about it. They were like, oh, it's yeah. better than you think it is. Like As they got hands-on, yeah. that's when they became believers. I don't think it's a spoiler to, say, spoiler to say too much that early in the game, your character gets infected. That's why he's got the crazy thing on his right. arm. Yep. That's why he's got the blade. And as that infection spreads throughout your body, you get more powerful and you gain more abilities. It does, and it does start really slow as as a result of that. I think in this game it actually would have benefited by the classic like thing where you start with all your powers and lose them. As much as I hate that in most games, this at least would have done a good job of giving you a taste of what you'll be building to. The more powers you get and the more like robust the combat becomes, then it's like things get interesting and then actually like the game by the end. Whereas the beginning I was kinda like, eh, this is really, know, really like the progression at the beginning of the game. The game doesn't have blind fire, which is weird, and you can't hold down, I was playing on uh, PS3, but you can't hold down the X button to like run, then snap into a cover, then leap over the cover, then move right, you have to stop. And Everyone is yeah. a different separate like discrete button press, and that was a little bit strange at first, but I was still happy with the fact that the cover worked, the shooting worked, and then by the time I got the glaive, I was like, okay, well this is new. And then very shortly afterwards, I got a new glaive power, and I was like, okay, well this is new. And then yeah. very shortly afterwards, I got right. a new power, and I was like, all right, this is cool. Then they introduced the, yeah, the weapon upgrade the, system. Yeah. Right. Like, it comes in at a relatively like consistent pace, and you always feel like you're getting something new. Right. First glaive power you get is the environmental stuff where you know you throw it into a fire, it turns, it becomes on fire, then you can throw it out the uh, the black goo that like blocks half of the doors, you right, know, right, in, right. in the world. Or shoot, you know, throw it into like electricity and use that, which you know affects enemies as well. Yeah, you know, that stuff's cool, and that's kind of ties into their very few puzzles they have, or like you know, guide the glaive using the after touch like over a wall and hit a button. Like, like the weapon up six access, like Heavenly Sword. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it does use it. It does use it. Oh, like Heavenly Sword. Very similar. It's very close to what it was on Heavenly Sword. It works the same with the analog stick too. I, mean, right. I had no problem with that either. They still managed to work in the gear stuff even into the glaive though. Like instead of like in gears, you have to act a reload where you have to like hit the bumper to like uh, you would do more damage if you reload that way instead. And in in Dark Sector, you have the power throw where if you like 
hold down the throw button and let it go like at a certain time in the meter, you'll do four times the damage, and that's when you like chop off limbs more easily and right. chop guys in half and stuff. I kind of love that timing aspect. Like it's the kind of the game within a game, just like the act of reloading. And for me, every time I did it, like it was kind of like a little thrill. I made sure that I learned the timing, so I can do it almost every time now. And what's great is if you have a dual shock, you can do it based on the vibration of the controller okay. when you're not zooming in with the reticle. So like you can still get the power shot as long as your timing is right when you don't hold down the L trigger to zoom. I love how like the glaive is used to, um, if you're like shooting from like a balcony or something, you can use it to grab like a, a weapon that an enemy dropped. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's great as kind of like the the, the Link, you know, Zelda-esque boomerang that you can use to pick things up. Later in the game, too, I mean, they start hiding more kind of <laughs> secret items a little bit. You know, it'll be yes, off in a corner yeah. that you can't necessarily walk to, but you can, you know, throw your, your glaive over there and grab it. After you upgrade your weapons... Yeah, and upgrading, um, like, it, it's, it's pretty satisfying when you do. You get yeah. some really powerful guns. Like, the upgrade power is when you slot it onto the gun, it's there for good. There's oh, a lot yeah. of things where yeah. it's like, like you just kind of learn by doing it with the upgrading system. That's why it's kind of weird. It's also or, a reddit. Or, Nick, like, you can read the manual and you would know this. I could do that. Yeah. But... All right. I had the glaive, then, like, you have a hand weapon. I got that handheld shotgun. Right. And I would just kick ass up close, and then I had my rifle from when I had to do a long distance. And that were great. I was running around with this shotgun that I could fire, like, very, very fast, almost semi auto, without, with no scope. And that experience was very much like Resident Evil. I would use a glaive when they're like medium distance away. As soon as I got within the radius, then I pull out the gun. You know, it worked out so great. Right, because the beginning of the early in the game when you start, it's mostly this kind of like a go into cover and then combat, you know, soldiers that are firing at right. you with weapons. Right. So once, you know, you get to the point in the game where it's like, weird creatures running at you and trying to attack you with melee, you know, melee weapons, then it's like, it turns into a different game. Boss battles. It seems like they're getting hit, but if you weren't doing the actual trick, you could, you could do that indefinitely. Yeah, you don't really it seems, know, you no couldn't like know you're hurting them until they're dead or like... It really annoyed because a lot of times I kind of got stuck in that I kept almost infinitely in a loop, just kind of hitting a guy, dodging, hitting, you know, and it, he wasn't getting hurt, but he looked like he was. Maybe you even put a life bar on it, that'll help this, like, indi for indication reasons, you know? I just want to know, you know, I'm actually making progress. It has its own engine and not Unreal Engine, and it actually runs more smoothly than anything I've huh. seen on Unreal Engine. There's no weird, like, texture pop in, it's just, like, buttery smooth, looks gorgeous. Yeah. But they still have, like, the gear's aesthetic down path. <laughs> There's a lot of like kind of random sci-fi. The stages yeah. feel a little generic. The the enemies feel a little generic. The character and some of the boss designs are really cool, like visually, and they yeah. just they just kind of fit in with their mechanics. But the just the rest of it, yeah, like the kind of just general like aesthetic and the general plan is that the bad guys and the environments are like like literally you just could take like these are outtakes from gears. Right. Let's take this little like plaza that I'm gonna fight a bunch of guys and dump right. it in Dark like, Sector. When you play a game like Eco, you've got the space is very well defined. Like you you get a sense as you go through it that it is this one cohesive castle and you're, you know, traveling all around these different parts of it. And in this game it's just like a bunch of, you know, areas blended together with load screens and I don't really feel like I don't know where I am. I don't know I don't have a good feel for that space. <laughs> I think it says something that we keep going back to talking about how we enjoy the combat, how we do it. Because like we kind of light up at those points. Because like that's the fun part, you know. And I could keep doing that like in generic levels, but it's not wrong to want more. It's While playing this game, one of my friends hadn't played Gears yet, and so he wanted to play a little mm -hmm. co-op. So we hopped in, played some Gears, and then went back to uh, Dark Sector right afterwards. Yeah, how that and compare? It yeah, held up surprisingly well, I must no say. Kidding. Yeah, I mean, that's aside good. from the fact that, like I say, you're losing co-op. That's a big, it's a big loss. Of course. But the single player is amped up in the places that I feel appropriate so that, you know, it still turns into a fulfilling experience. I felt it nailed this kind of RE4 sort of vibe pretty well. Yeah. It nailed this, like, Gears thing. It has the glaive. You know, there were enough new kind of pieces, like, and the best of some of the things that we've played recently, all yeah. kind of mashed into one game. Is Gears better? Yeah. 
but I'd still, I, I would recommend anyone who likes Gears to, you know, check it out, give, give it a look. Kill some time till November. Hey, dude. Hey, let's go. Hey, Smash. 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 No, dude, I told you, I don't play that Come game. Come on, you, you think it's a baby game? Come on, one game. Give me one game, I'll prove you wrong. All right, man. I'm going to change my mind, but let's do it. No fucking way. Alright. Back in the action. Wait, C Stick C Stick does the smash. Wait, wait. Dude, what dude, I'm asking you fucking it Yeah, right, that's it, yeah. Why don't you just smash me while I'm talking here? Yeah, thing. Fuck! Fuck! Fuck, my block's not working. What the fuck? Dude, what the fuck? So, you made it, it's a real fighter. Yeah, alright, okay, it's a real fighter. God, yeah, I, you know. Alright, it has more depth than I thought it did, I admit it. Okay, yeah. It's a real fighter. People should play it. I agree.